Hi, and thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Nada Youssef, and today we have Dr. James Abraham, Director of the Breast Cancer Program, and today we're talking about everything breast cancer. So please make sure you guys are logged in, send us your questions. I'll try to get them live here and get as many as we can in this half an hour. Uh, but before we start, please remember that this is for informational purposes only, and this does not in any way replace your own physician's advice. So um, let's go ahead and get started. First of all, thank you so much. I know you're very, very busy. Thank you for coming. And if you want to go ahead and start by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Nana. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Jim Abraham. I'm the director of the Breast Oncology Program. As a breast medical oncologist, um, I have the opportunity to take care of a number of women with the diagnosis of breast cancer. Great. Okay, excellent. Well, let's go ahead and start with our first question. I have a question from Stacy. When should I get a mammogram? I'm 36 and I have no breast cancer in my family. That's a really good question. And uh, Stacy, thank you for asking that question. Um, there is a lot of controversy about uh, when to start mammogram. So in a, um, in a person with no uh, risk for uh, breast cancer or average risk for breast cancer, the recommendation from NCCN, which is our you know, large oncology group, mm -hmm. is to start the mammogram at the age of 40. Now, for starting the mammogram at the age of 40 and continue that once a year. American Cancer Society um, recommends starting the mammogram at the age of 45, but any person uh, above the age of 40 should have the option to do an annual mammogram. Okay. So it's really important for Stacy to talk to the, uh, the doctor mm -hmm. and understand what's the risk for breast cancer and then plan for the mammogram. And so overall, we, can, we should say that she should start at the age of 40, mm -hmm. and then continue uh, every year. But having a conversation with their family doctor will uh, really help them understand how to have that shared decision making. Sure, right. okay, great, thank right. you. Okay, and our next question from Deanna. I've been told I have dense breasts. What does that mean? And am I at a higher risk for breast cancer because of that? Right, so there is a lot of controversy or there's a lot of you know, conversations about dense breast. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's kind of a new term in the past you know, four or five years or so. Dense breast, that doesn't mean that how the breast you know, feels. It actually talks about the amount of fatty tissue in the breast versus the breast you know, fibrous tissue, the breast tissue, okay. the ducts and the lobules and all. So the, the, the density of the breast changes as we age. You know, in a person who is, let's just say, in their 40s or uh, early 50s, uh, it can, uh, almost 40 to 50 percent of the, the patients, you know, individuals ha can have a dense breast. When somebody is in the 70s, it could be about 20 percent. So it's usually we can decide about breast density from a mammogram. If you look mm -hmm. at the mammogram, we can say, oh, that mammogram, that's that individual has less you know, dense breast or high dense breast. So, and based upon many of some of the studies, we know that breast density is a risk factor for breast cancer, about five to six times or so. It increases the risk for breast cancer. As you get older. As you, so as you, when you have the dense breast. Sure. So, and some of the medicines we use, like you know, hormone replacement treatment or some of the medicines can increase the breast density. So it's important for Diana to talk to the family medicine doctor and then make sure, you know, kind of understand what it means for her okay. after looking at her mammogram. Great. All right, thanks. And let's go ahead and go to the next question. We have uh, Brittany. Can having plastic surgery done on your breast cause cancer or increase your risk for breast cancer? So uh, plastic surgery, you know, let's just say somebody's doing you know, breast plastic surgery for breast augmentation or you know, something of that benign procedure, that should not increase the risk for breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. Any plastic surgery reconstructive procedure should not increase your risk for breast cancer. It's not linked at all? No, we okay. don't have any data to support that. Okay, well, right. that's good to know. Right. Right. Good. Um, okay, and then I have a question from Sandy. Uh, could pain in my breast indicate cancer? If not, what else could cause it? And I guess I'll add to that, what kind of pain? If it's a lump, if it's soreness, right. what kind of pain could be causing that? Right, you're right. No, no. So pain by itself, you know, pain is a vague symptom. Right. And, uh, and you can have pain from many different reasons. 
So just because somebody has pain in the breast, that doesn't mean that that's breast cancer. Mm -hmm. But as you said, it's important to make sure do they have, you know, uh, she has a new lump or skin changes, changes in the nipple, mm -hmm. nipple discharge. Um, so it's important to make sure um, other, you know, there are other symptoms. But if there's a new pain which is persistent, getting worse, it's important to get evaluated. Okay. But just because somebody has pain, that doesn't mean that that's cancer. Right. But okay. you know, again, at the same time, they shouldn't, shouldn't be ignoring a new onset. Always check with your doctor. Yeah, always <laughs> with doctor. Great. Um, I have a question from Sammy Lynn. Uh, my mom just got diagnosed with breast cancer. What do we do next? So that's a good question. That's uh, you know, about, as you know, in, in U.S., about you know, 250,000 women you know, will walk out of the doctor's office with a diagnosis of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And that's a question they all ask, you know, what should I do next? Um, the most important, as a breast cancer doctor have been doing for you know, 10, 15 years, my recommendation will be to find a good team. You know, find a good team for you. you know, and breast cancer treatment is not done by one person. It's not mm -hmm. done by a surgeon or a medical oncologist or radiation oncologist alone. And it's a team approach. So if you look at cancer care overall, it's a really a team approach and breast cancer is really a, a good example of how the, the team works together. Sure. So you need to have a good radiologist, making sure and you know, giving the proper diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You need to have a good pathologist you know, who look at the, you know, the tissue and then giving the accurate diagnosis. Right. And then you need to have an excellent surgeon, you know, a medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, a plastic surgeon. So it's really, really important for um, her to connect with the team right. uh, whom you know, they can relate and trust and connect. Great. Excellent. Thank you. This is great. And then I have um, Mesery. Uh, for someone who has been on breast cancer treatment and declared cancer-free, are there any possibilities to conceive after that when you're in your early 40s? Right. So um, that's a good question. So there are a you know, number of, unfortunately, there are a number of young women get a diagnosis of breast cancer. Um, and young um, you know, individuals, young women face, you know, they have many unique challenges. Sure. You know, and unfortunately, it is one of that. You know, so, um, so diagnosis, treatment, um, and having a young family at the same time, right. you know, work, balancing the work and, um, and a work life. Um, so, and fertility is an extremely important you know, uh, aspect of that. So to, um, to give a one word answer, definitely. They okay. can have, mm -hmm. you know, they can conceive after um, breast cancer diagnosis. Okay. So uh, breast cancer is not an absolute contraindication not to have you know, uh, children after that, mm -hmm. definitely. But again, that depends on multiple factors. Now, what's the stage, when they finish the treatment, sure. what's the type of breast cancer. Um, so it's, uh, as I said, because it has many other dimensions of sure. the care, it's extremely important to make sure uh, they have a team who specializes in young women's in a care. But it's not ruled out. It's so not absolutely good. ruled out. Mm -hmm. And then what we do is we have a young women's clinic um, sure. at the Cleveland Clinic. and so. Uh, so that we have a fertility you know, a specialist sure. you know, who see uh, a young person with a diagnosis of breast cancer even before we start any treatment. Right. So they can have that conversation early on and, and, and plan what they can do you know, two years from now. Sure. So, sure. So, for the, for, so it's really important for them to get connected to a, a multidisciplinary young women's clinic and sure. a fertility expert to have for the conversation. And that's a part of that good team that you mentioned. That's right, sure. that's right, yeah. Okay, great. Um, I have another question here from uh, Najwa. Um, is hormonal replacement therapy recommended? Many researchers say it might cause cancer. Right, so, um, so hormonal replacement treatment is probably one of the very <laughs> controversial topic in sure. you know, women's health. Um, so like before 2001 or 2002, we used to recommend HRT or hormone replacement treatment for every you know, you know, every individual okay. um, uh, after menopause that is like like a standard recommendation like aspirin for heart disease and you know, sure. so how HRT was, but uh, 2001 or 2002 we have large data came out saying that um, hormone replacement treatment can increase the risk for breast cancer, 
So in general, that blanket recommendation of everybody should take hormone replacement treatment, mm -hmm. and we, are, we don't, we're not doing that anymore. Okay. But again, it's like any medicines we do, um, um, you know, we should look at the risk and benefit. If somebody has a family history of breast cancer or high risk for breast cancer, they should be seriously thinking about and you know, should, should they take an you know, HRT or hormone replacement treatment because it can increase the risk for breast cancer. Sure. But uh, at the same time, I don't want to say nobody should be doing HRT you know, hormone replacement treatment because there are a lot of benefits of hormone replacement treatment you know, like intractable menopausal symptoms, vaginal dryness and hot flashes. Sure. So they should be talking to their you know, family doctor or gynecologist or internist and then really look at the risk for breast cancer okay. uh, or risk for other things like blood clots or uterine cancer, different things, and then make an informed decision. Um, as a breast cancer doctor, I'll say that clearly increase the risk for breast cancer. If you have a, a risk for breast cancer, probably try to avoid that. Great. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, and we have Donna. Um, I turned 40 last year. When should I consider my first doctor visit with a mammogram? So, Donna, as I mentioned before, I was, and we were talking uh, about Stacy's question. Um, our recommendation is to start the mammogram at the age of 40. Sure. So, at the age of 40, every person uh, with an average risk, you know, or you know, a person who has no high risk of breast cancer, mm -hmm. uh, should um, uh, consider doing mammogram once a year at the age of 40. Um, and then, uh, uh, and different groups have different percept and a different recommendation, and then but it's extremely important to make sure that you, know, you should be talking to your doctor about starting now. Uh, when I say you should be talking to your doctor, because the recommendation for mammogram can be changed based upon your risk. So right. and there are multiple risk factors of breast cancer. Family history is one of them. Um, and from your mother's side and your dad's side, so it's important to understand what's your risk for breast cancer. Okay, great. And then going kind of general, um, I think our viewers would like to know, what are there just general symptoms for breast cancer? Are there general symptoms that if people have? Is that, is that kind of what you said earlier with pain? Is there anything else that we should know? Right. So, um, so there are multiple you know, symptoms and signs which uh, a, a person can watch for. Um, skin changes, skin, skin changes. retraction, or nipple changes, um, and nipple discharge from one side, okay. or bloody discharge, feeling a lump, you know, making sure right. they examine the lump in the breast, or you know, if they feel a lump under the uh, arm. So lump pain, new onset pain, which is persisting, mm -hmm. skin changes, uh, changes in the nipple, right. um, areola area. So those are all uh, important. Okay, great. Right. Um, let's see, we have Gregory. I'm a man and I have um, a large breast that is causing me a lot of pain. Can it be cancer? So that's a good question, Gregory. About 2,000 or 2,500 or so men get a diagnosis of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, again, compared to women, about 250,000 women get a diagnosis of breast cancer. It's less common, but okay. breast cancer can happen in men. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so if it's um, a, a new onset pain only on one side, I think it's good for him to at least talk to the family doctor uh, or, 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 or his primary care doctor and make sure there's no lump or nothing you know, different. Sure. And, and if there's a lump or if there's a change, it's not, no, no, they can always get an ultrasound, ultrasound of the breast, or even a mammogram. So okay. um, if it's on the both sides, probably it's less chance of um, being um, a cancer. But I think it's, it's important for uh, Gregory to know that um, uh, breast cancer can happen in men, um, and, and if there is a concern, it's good for you to uh, check up with your uh, family doctor. Okay, thank you. And then um, let's go to the next one here. Lisa, um, I have a triangle-shaped cyst or tumor. Uh, should, abdom should abnormal shape immediately be removed? Um, she's 27 years old. So, Lisa, thank you for the question. So, um, if it's the, um, a new lump, New lump. It's important to do workup. You know, usually when we feel or com patients complain about a lump, mm -hmm. we usually we recommend an ultrasound. 
So they can, the radiologist can look at the ultrasound and if the radiologist clearly said it's a cyst, cyst means collection of fluid, yeah. then that's less worrisome and they will say, let's just repeat the an ultrasound uh, six months or three months and so they will rec make that recommendation based upon how you know, this, this is looking under the, mic, you know, under the ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, uh, you know, I don't think you should ignore, uh, make sure you have the ultrasound or proper testing um, and then, um, uh, depending upon what's the finding from the testing, they can make the decision what's the next step. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, we have Carol. Can you explain ductal carcinoma? So, ductal carcinoma. So, um, so if you look at breast cancer, um, 80 to 90 percent of breast cancer arises from the duct. And in the breast, okay. we have ducts and then we have lobules. So, 80 to 90 percent of breast arises from the duct. Um, and about 10% arises from the lobule. Um, uh, so ductal carcinoma uh, is the most common type of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And there are two types of ductal carcinoma. There is an invasive ductal cancer. That's the most common type. And a cancer happens in the duct, it kind of invades outside. Mm -hmm. So that's invasive ductal carcinoma. Um, I don't know what exactly Carol means. Um, so there is a ductal carcinoma in situ, means the carcinoma happens within the duct it stays within the duct. Okay. So that's ductal carcinoma inside too. I see. So invasive ductal carcinoma is the most common type which we see and which is the one which has the potential of going to the lymph node. So uh, um, you know, you know, if it's ductal carcinoma inside too, if it's staying within the duct, we call it a stage zero. So the less oh, okay. worrisome for uh, spreading that to the other part it's of the spread. body. Right. Great. Right. Okay, and the questions are coming in. We have Becky. I started my mammograms at the age of 18. I have had five biopsies. So far, they've been cysts. Do I have to worry that it might turn into cancer? I do have a family history of breast cancer. Would you recommend a mastectomy? Right. So, <clears throat> Becky, I'm sorry you're, you're really young and you're going through all these procedures. So, but I'm glad you're being proactive and, and taking care of yourself. So, uh, let's just look at the risk for breast cancer. So here Becky is saying she has a family history. So when somebody has a strong family history, strong family history, uh, when we say strong family history under the age of 50, mm -hmm. multiple family members with breast cancer or breast or ovarian cancer, again, and especially under the age of 50, or um, uh, it can be from either side, from the dad's side or from mother's side. So that sometimes we ignore the dad side, and right. we just focus only on that. And, and, and we see patients saying, "Oh, my mom is fine, my sisters are fine, but oh, my dad's sister had sure. ovarian cancer at the age of you know, uh, 30." So then we need to work. Sure. So if there is a strong family history, we usually recommend a genetic counseling. Okay. So, so about five to 10 percent of breast cancers are due to an abnormal gene. So I'm sure if, um, uh, if Becky had a concern of strong family history, um, at some point, I'm sure their you know, family doctor would have recommended a genetic counseling. Um, if the genetic counseling is done, if the test is positive, then we usually recommend doing uh, screening at the age of 25. 25. You know, so that's usually we do breast MRI for that, breast sure. MRI starting sure. from that. So again, that depends on other family members, what age they had the breast cancer. So it's, you know, when they say they have a strong family history, it's really important to make sure, are we talking about a gene or are we talking about a non-hereditary breast cancer? Sure. So then you know, she had multiple biopsies. Um, so um, I'm sure uh, you know, you're followed by, uh, Becky, you're followed by an, an expert and you know, a team you know, in, in the high-risk clinic they can recommend you know, what's the best imaging type. Okay. Mammogram is good, but in young patients, mammogram can be uh, tough because of the breast density. Sure. So in young individuals, you know, um, if there is a strong family history, um, so usually we say more than 20% chance of developing breast cancer lifetime, mm -hmm. we rec recommend breast MRI. Um, so, uh, so, and sometimes we recommend you know, tomosynthesis and different things. So it's really important to make sure that she talks to the right team, um, pick um, the right screening modality, and then having a regular follow-up. Great. Right. Excellent. Okay, and let me see here. We have Linda. Um, 
if you had a tumor removed that was cancer and it was very small, um, it was n her two negative, do you not always have to have radiation? So, um, so look, you're saying you, the, the tumor is taken out, that's HER2 negative and it's small tumor. So um, if we do lumpectomy, we're mm -hmm. just taking only the tumor out, lumpectomy, okay. in general, the recommendation is to do radiation. radiation. So after lumpectomy, uh, radiation is, and in general, we recommend. Um, but um, that recommendation can be different based upon other factors. Sure. And, um, Linda, that depends upon your age and um, you know, your other medical problems um, and then other features within the tumor. You know. So in general, lumpectomy, uh, we recommend uh, radiation. But if somebody had like mastectomy, the whole breast is taken out, less chance of radiation. And again, that depends upon what's the stage, what's the type and other features. Sure, right. great. Okay, and I have, uh, let's see. My mother died from breast cancer at the age of 58 years old. Other than getting an annual breast examination and, map and a mammography, what are the things I can do to prevent getting this disease, and what role does diet play in this disease? We haven't touched on diet, so right. I'm glad that I read this one. <laughs> right, right. So then let me start with the diet. Yes. Then. So, um, so diet plays a major role in many of our chronic diseases. Sure. You know, you know, hypertension, diabetes, and uh, you know, other things. So uh, diet plays a major role in breast cancer too. You know, um, it, it, sometimes I say it's almost like a metabolic disease. Sure. Um, so what happens is when we, have, when we consume high fat diet, mm -hmm. uh, that can potentially increase the um, uh, estrogen level. Mm -hmm. So it's related to the estrogen in our body. So mm -hmm. when there's high estrogen level, there's high you know, increased risk for breast cancer. So, um, uh, so um, exercise, um, uh, regular exercise, um, healthy diet, mm -hmm. um, and maintaining a healthy weight is extremely important sure. um, in a person to prevent or cut down the risk for breast cancer. So that can be, you know, that can be the answer for your uh, question, what you can do to prevent, and you know, the things what you can prevent. You can't change your family history, <laughs> right. you know, you're born to that. So, so when you said your mom and I died from breast cancer, I'm sorry to hear about that. Um, uh, when you say your mom died from breast cancer at the age of 58, um, as I said before, it's really important to make sure what other risk factors you have. Let's just say your aunt had breast cancer at the age of you know, 55 or somebody else had breast cancer or ovarian cancer then you should um, probably talk to the, uh, your, uh, your, your doctor, your family doctor, sure. see uh, if she should see a genetic counselor. Mm -hmm. Again, that depends upon that strong family history which I was sure. describing before. So depending upon that recommendation, they can decide if she's a candidate for genetic testing. So if the genet again, that's only 5 to 10% of breast cancer. Okay. Oh, no. So. If that come back as positive, then the recommendation for screening and prevention will change. Sure. So if, the, and if, if she doesn't have the gene, then again, maintaining a healthy, um, and other things which I just mentioned, sure. you know, exercise and diet and having annual screening mammogram. Sure, great. Well, we're actually almost out of time, but I wanted to give you kind of like a last few minutes to um, give us any takeaways for the viewers, anything maybe that we have not touched on that you would like to say? So, unfortunately, breast cancer and I still, um, um, and, uh, if I can say, kill about 40,000 women in the in, in, in U.S. So that's still a huge number. Uh, about 240,000 uh, women will get a diagnosis of breast cancer. But the good news is the number of patients, number of individuals dying from breast cancer is uh, coming down steadily uh, um, every year the mortality um, uh, is coming down straight, uh, steadily. That's because of many reasons. One, an effective and an early screening. The screening plays a major role. Um, then a highly active, effective treatment plays a major role. Um, and then um, uh, and, and, and the research, uh, the clinical trials and the research and finding better treatment for breast cancer uh, clearly um, and it helps. So from your side, continue to be proactive, continue to take care of yourself, continue to maintain a healthy you know, lifestyle, get the screening mammogram as recommended to your family doctor, and continue to advocate for breast cancer research. Mm -hmm.
Great. Well, thank you again so much for coming in today. And um, for more health news and tips, make sure you follow us on Cleveland Clinic, Facebook, and Twitter. And we'll see you again next time. Thank you. Thank you.